Oh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we continue here with uh, our next concurrent session. This is, is the online learning. Uh, the title of this is Comprehensive Faculty Professional Development to Improve Online Hybrid Instruction in an Hispanic Servant Institution. The presenters will be Frances M. Garcia and Dr. Diana M. Valle Riestra from Alvis University in Miami campus. So you guys are free uh, to present today. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the Comprehensive Faculty Professional Development to Improve Online Hybrid Instruction in a Hispanic Serving Institution. This presentation is provided to you by the Title V PPOJ grant at Albizu University Miami campus. My name is Frances Garcia and I'm the Instructional Designer and with me today is Dr. Diana M. Bayer-Riesta, the Project Director of the Title V PPOHA graduate grant. This presentation aims to, to provide a coordinated professional development plan for faculty around best practices in providing effective delivery of online instruction to students. It will also demonstrate how to address the professional development needs of faculty in a Hispanic serving institution related to the online instruction and the development of support tools. So before we share the work that we have done around faculty professional development, let's talk a little bit about our university. Albizu University is a four-year private nonprofit institution of higher education, and it has two campuses in Puerto Rico, one in San Juan and another one in Maya West. And then there is a branch campus that is located in Miami, which is where Francis and I um, work out of. The institution was founded in 1966. And the work that is gonna be presented here today is all work that falls under a five-year federal grant, the Title V PPOHA grant that was awarded to Albizu University Miami campus in October of 2019. We are currently in our third year of the five-year grant. Our institution promotes professional preparation and connections, particularly in the fields of psychology, human services, and speech language pathology. And you can look here on this slide, our demographic information that describes our graduate student population. The majority of our students, 85%, report being Hispanic or Latino, 83% are female, the majority at 70, 79% report that there are working professionals. And we do have um, a smaller percentage of students that report high poverty needs. In terms of our graduate faculty, we have 20 faculty who are full-time at the university. We have 68 who are adjuncts. 95% uh, of our Miami faculty hold a PhD or an equivalent degree, terminal degree and 14% of the graduate faculty report being Hispanic or Latino. When we started this work, the university had already identified and prioritized expanding the offering of graduate courses into an online format. And this proved very timely because just a couple of months after we started this work, um, the COVID-19 pandemic hit um, and there were many challenges that we needed to face that were associated with the delivery of instruction. So the timing in terms of meeting the needs uh, of the university really aligned. Um, and then we uh, conducted or the university conducted a survey with the faculty to find out what were their needs in terms of online instruction. And based on the faculty survey findings, we were able to identify that the faculty wanted to work on um, addressing very specific areas of needs. Uh, the needs identified were uh, around ways to address barriers for student success. So uh, anything that had to do with how to better engage or more effectively engage our students how to access technology, uh, techniques and strategies to support diverse learners, 
and also how to better structure engaging learning activities that would foster student engagement and student interaction. Next slide, please. So in response to the need of the faculty and our challenges with the COVID-19 pandemic, one of the ways that we delivered content to faculty was via the development of a series of video modules. We were able to develop, create, film, and disseminate a total of 13 video modules during the spring of 2021. Um, the modules really provided another resource and tool with helpful information that would assist our faculty in delivering effective online instruction to our graduate students. Each video had an accompanying PowerPoint presentation and there was a script developed for each video. The videos were all recorded on, um, at our recording studio on the Miami campus with a green screen and a teleprompter. Next slide, please. Understanding also that faculty um, are very busy and unless you make professional development very targeted and very easy to access, um, they will not take advantage of it. So one of the things that Francis and I looked at is how do we organize our video module series in a way that would make it easy for our faculty to access and to navigate. And we decided on, a, on an organizational framework that is on your slide here, where every module was introduced um, and we outlined the learning objectives and activities within the module. After that, the faculty would take a, a short, a very short pretest before they would actually view the video. Then we would have the video lecture. After the video lecture, they had the opportunity to download the actual PowerPoint if they wanted to go back and refer to it and keep it within their own files, electronic files. At the end of that, they had an opportunity to take a post-test so that we can analyze the data between pre and post-test in terms of how much did they learn on the particular topic. And then finally, they could request, the last step was to request a certificate of completion. Just for further information, um, we created these 13 video modules. Um, they were very well received by our administration and our HR department encouraged um, our faculty to complete either all of the video modules or up to, I believe, nine of these video modules as part of their professional development plan with the university. Next slide, please. And here on this slide, you can, you can actually see the 13 topics. So these are the topics we focused on to assist our faculty in developing specific skills that they identified that they needed to develop around particular areas, as well as a variety of tools that they want, that they could use to engage their graduate students. So for example, uh, accessibility and online learning, you know, to learn more about that also, creating effective PowerPoint presentations, developing and using assessment rubrics to assess student performance and progress in courses, uh, using a discussion board to really engage students within the online format, and then using Blackboard as the uh, Blackboard Gradebook Center because Blackboard is our learning management system. So these are the topics that we created, all of the videos and PowerPoints. Next slide, please. This is a sample video. This was on module 11. So this example of a video lecture is really focused on the importance of faculty mentoring in ensuring student success. All of our videos were relatively short. Again, we really focused on easy navigation, easy resources that, that um, faculty can access. So most videos were between five to six minutes in length. And I think, um, Francis, we can show just about a minute of this video. Is that possible? Yes. Okay. Do we have sound? Yeah. Can you hear it? No. No? No. No, sound, we don't have sound. Hmm.
Um, and my bottom is working. Did you share the sound in Zoom when you shared your screen to optimize for video and sound? Hmm. No. Um. It was. Um. Um. I. I can listen it here. I think some a participant said, "Did you check the snap the sound settings in Zoom?" Yeah. So give me just a second. Let me see. I did check that one. One second. Let me see if I can do something on my side. Okay. On my side. Perfect. Thank okay, you. So thank much. you. I'd like to just show you a sample of, you know, a one minute of the video. Number one is to start can you hear it? Eh? Yeah. Could you start it from the beginning, Francis? Sure. Yes. Okay. Put it up a little. Welcome to the Faculty Professional Development Video Series Spring 2021 Module 11 presentation titled The Importance of Faculty Mentoring in Ensuring Student Success. My name is Dr. Diana Valle-Piestra. I am the Project Director for the Title V PPOHA Graduate Grant, a five-year federal grant that focuses on two primary initiatives. Initiative number one, is to strengthen and expand online and hybrid graduate course offerings. And initiative number two is to strengthen graduate student supports and resources. Upon successful completion of this module, you will be able to apply best practices for faculty mentoring, plan a faculty mentoring process, and develop a faculty mentoring checklist. Attending a new university at either the undergraduate or graduate level can often be difficult for many students, but especially for students from culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds or non-traditional students. For these students, progress towards obtaining a degree is often a difficult and complicated process with a variety of barriers to overcome, which result in high attrition rates. For example, educational attainment remains low for Hispanic students, and this population is one of the minority groups least likely to complete graduate degrees. It is well documented that institutions of higher education in the United States face challenges related to graduate Okay, so that gives you an idea of a sample of sort of how we structured the videos. Um, and all of these videos were um, uploaded, um, as I previously said, following that organizational framework um, on our learning management system, Blackboard. So next slide, please. So some of the data from our pre, so some of the data from our pre and post survey on faculty instructional knowledges and practices. So as I mentioned earlier, we conducted a pre and a post faculty instructional survey to assess faculty about their knowledge and best practices for online instruction. Next slide, please. We created an instrument that contained a total of 31 statements or questions on a Likert type scale from zero to three, where the faculty identified the practice as they weren't knowledgeable in the practice to they were very knowledgeable. The instrument was, could you go back please? The instrument that we created was, um, was in three parts. Part one is um, asking some demographic information of the faculty. Part two was the instructional practices section where we asked about some general knowledge and course design course alignment knowledge and Blackboard knowledge. And finally, the, we ended um, the survey with uh, any open-ended comments that the faculty wanted to make. Next slide, please. 
So if you look at the some of the demographic information on our survey respondents, this was a small sample of graduate faculty who completed the survey. Um, years of teaching was evenly split between faculty who reported teaching between one to five years and then the other extreme faculty who reported more than 20 years of teaching experience. The majority of the respondents came from our human services PhD program, and most of them had been teaching online. That was their current teaching format. Next slide, please. In terms of areas that were identified as the most improved. So these are the areas respondents have improved in the most, which really centers around addressing barriers, student barriers to success. So that issue of accessibility and engagement, also the ability to structure learning activities to maximize student engagement and interaction and also the ability to create measurable course learning objectives. So those were the three identified most improved areas. In terms of areas that the faculty identified as still needing, next slide please, still needing um, more support, more faculty professional development and areas that they would like to see improved. Um, it focused, one was focusing on the advanced tools that Blackboard provides, such as interactive collaboration tools, as well as effective online course design. So those were two areas identified as still needing more professional development in. And then finally, when we quantitatively looked at, next slide please, the change between pre-survey and post-survey we did see a positive increase in faculty knowledge and application with a 25.8% increase from pre to post. And now Francis is going to talk about the other process that we use to provide faculty professional development to our faculty who were involved in course conversion. Okay. Now um, we're gonna transition to this course conversion process. Once a faculty member is assigned to a course, I will schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting to go over the course delivery checklist and timeline. At this meeting, they will sign the professional services agreement that state they will receive a stipend for a conversion of their course. And this stipend will be submitted to them as soon as they deliver all, they submit all the deliverables. These deliverables include syllabus template, PowerPoint lectures, course introduction video, course weekly objectives, the course scale, the course weekly assignments and activities, rubrics, and the pre-post faculty introduction uh, practices knowledge survey. These are the areas that are more challenging for our faculty. Advanced tools in Blackboard, ADA compliance, and these are the areas that they require more support and how to engage students in an online course and how to develop the assessment in an online course. When a professor needs support and feedback, I'll schedule a meeting and do a walkthrough on the professor's course shell in Blackboard in the areas their course needs improvement. And I will provide them with samples of different assignments, assessments, and tools that they can incorporate in the course that the main focus will be to engage the students. An example would be to incorporate a YouTube video into the class topic. This YouTube video needs to make sure that you have enabled the closed captions for ADA compliance, and then they can create a discussion forum where students can come, in, come in and discuss it. And they can also do the same with a web article. So what will be our next step to expand our faculty professional development series? We will develop cheat sheet that the main focus will be the quality matter standards. We already started disseminating this cheat sheet on January 10, 2022. We will also develop a series of video navigation tutorials on how to use Panopto, Captivate, and Articulate. And that brings us to the end of our presentation. I want to thank you for your time and attention today. 
If anyone has any questions, we will be happy to open for discussion. And here's our contact information.